I finished this so fast. It was so lovely. But this writing, this writing felt like it was on Wattpad. Hey, what's up, I'm Zoe. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So I'm sure you know the drill on what a wrap up is. We're going to be talking about every single book that I read for the past two months. The reason why I do two month wrap ups is because one month comes way too fast for me and there are just some months that I just don't read a lot of books. So those would be less fulfilling and I just thought it would be better and more worth everyone's time if we wait two months, for me at least. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do today. Let's start off with everything that I read in March. The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. I loved this book so much, but that ending, I need more. Like, how can you leave me like that, Tiffany? This was a story that was loosely based off of Carrie. Uh, if you know Carrie, it's about... What is Carrie about, actually? I remember watching the movie when I was a child, which I definitely should not have done. I don't know who allowed that. All I remember is this girl went to her prom, homecoming, one of those, and she was so bullied and hated, like they, they like tricked her and made her feel like she was welcome when she really wasn't. And like they poured all the blood or something or like syrup or something on her. I don't know. And then she just kind of went like, ah, you know, I think something like that happened. I believe, maybe. Madison is biracial, but she is white passing and she is kind of an outcast in her town. They still have segregated proms and after a viral incident, they decide to have an integrated prom. Um, things still hit the fan. It's, I don't know what to say. It's just such a rush of a story, especially since I listened to the audiobook. I was just hanging off of every single freaking word and I need more. I need more. I need there just to be a bonus chapter. That's what I was missing from this book, but I, I didn't want to take away a point because of that, because I need a bonus chapter. I think we deserved a bonus chapter. I'm just saying. I, I need to know the last point of view of what happened and where we are today. I think I have enjoyed pretty much every single Tiffany D. Jackson book that I've read. Her skill of taking uh, either real inspired by real events or other media and just making it feel like a whole new story is just so... I love. Another one that I need to buy physically is The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. When I tell you I was not expecting to love this story as much as I loved it, the audiobook was excellent. I was so captivated. It's like, it, it, it just had me so engaged the whole time. And there was nothing special about this story. It's just about a female bodyguard who is guarding this very, very popular actor and trying to make sure one of his stalkers does not turn him, you know? And she goes and she stays with him and his family um, during a holiday, I believe. And she's pretending to be his girlfriend. So there's like the little bit of fake dating. It was just excellent. I was, I was just living for it. I was hanging off of the words and I don't know what it was, but something about this was just so good and simple, but yet had me holding on to this relationship like no other. I was, I was so into it. I was invested. The Empress of Salt and Fortune. This is a book that has been going around on booktube for years. I think Books and Lala is the first person that I actually saw talk about this book. Unfortunately, this was not five stars for me. I could not connect to this story at any point. Even from the jump, I just kind of felt like I just didn't know what was going on. I couldn't get back in to care about what the story was even talking about. <laughs> like, I can't even tell you what this was about to even, <laughs> like, everything had me lost, confused. I, I was not sure what was going on. I don't know if we were following animals or people or if it was just a bunch of metaphors. I don't know what was going on because it just, it, <laughs> everything had me 
lost. It wasn't for me. I thought it would be a nice, quick, innocent read. I don't know if it's because I used the audiobook, if that was part of the reason why I didn't enjoy it, or what. Blonde Hair, Blue Eyes by Catherine Slaughter. Or Karen Slaughter. <laughs> Karen, I said Catherine Slaughter. Karen Slaughter. I didn't know that this was a prequel book to another book in her series, which is my own fault for never reading summaries and just kind of going with the flow. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out. I mean, I thought it was a fine story. I wish it didn't go the way that it did, but obviously if I had known the series ahead of time, I would know how it was going to end. I mean, I knew how it was going to end. I was like, no, this is, this is too much. It did make me incredibly anxious when I was listening to the audiobook because I knew what was happening, obviously, but because it's a murder mystery, <laughs> but um, I just thought it was like a nice, quick little, you know, mystery novella. Um, no, it was a prequel. And so I feel like it isn't fair that I'm giving it two stars because I didn't like fully enjoy it because I don't know the whole series if that would have changed my enjoyment of it, but that's still how I felt about it. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't. Mm. <laughs> the first physical book I get to hold up and rant to you about, oh my goodness, Miss Magnolia Parks herself by Jessa Hastings. I definitely gave into the hype. I bought all four books of this series before I even finished this one. I just bought all of them because I didn't want to miss out on these covers. And I have never been so compelled to do something like that before. I'm always like, nah, it'll be fine. <laughs> I'll get to it when I get to it, you know? I did annotate it. I feel like I kind of have been debating if I should just do a whole video ranting on this book because I, I, I feel like it deserved a reading vlog, but it didn't get one. This is about a socialite, a young 20 something socialite in the UK who you know her and her whole group of friends they're very well known they're very rich well off they have tons of connections and her and her friend X BJ childhood love I don't know they are kind of exes who can't get away from each other and they have a very toxic relationship I think I started off really loving this book and really writing for Magnolia um, but then by the end of this, I did not care for Magnolia as much as I cared for her in the beginning. And I know this might sound like a very, very crazy thing to say. It became apparent to me in the last few chapters of this book. I realized that Magnolia Parks is not a girl's girl. And that really turned me off towards the end of this book, which then made the ending of this book very... Eh. <laughs> to me, <laughs> I didn't feel the same punch as I feel like I was supposed to feel with the ending that I feel like I would have felt more if Magnolia Parks was a girl's girl. I need a whole video to just go in on this book because I just, I need to release every single thought that I have on it. We did not really get off to a good start in April. This pains me so much to say because this should not have gone this way. I don't know what happened. I don't know. I, I feel like the problem is me. Okay, understand this before I show you what I'm about to talk about. I gave this book one star and that was me being generous. I did not like this. I did not finish it. It was DNF, but I gave it one star because I still kind of fast forwarded to like 60 pages. Oh my god! <laughs> Talia Hibbert? Are you kidding me? I did not like this. At all. I DNF'd it. It was, this was a joke. I thought I was gonna love it. I was annotating. <laughs> and I hated this. You know how many Barnes and Nobles I had to drive to to find this book? Many. This is Talia Hibbert's first uh, venture into YA. And it's about these two kids who are kind of like academic rivals and they are trying to get a scholarship and they have to do something in the woods or something. I don't even know what happened or what it was about anymore. This was one of my most anticipated reads of 2023. And I started off the month with this. I was so excited. I was ecstatic about this, okay? Talia Hibbert. The Brown Sisters Trilogy. I don't even want to be honest because I feel like the problem is me. You know, it's my fault that I didn't like it. But this writing, this writing felt like it was on Wattpad, okay? Like, oh my. But it did. 
it read like Wattpad. And like literally on the first page, the first fucking page of this book, I say, this is such an odd way to start this book. The book starts talking about conspiracy theory that Juice World is still alive. Juice World, like the rapper who passed away. Last year? Year before? First of all, I did not know that there was even a conspiracy that Juice World was still alive somewhere. Um, not that it's, it's not common for there to be conspiracies about people still being alive, but I feel like it would have been easier for me to absorb maybe Tupac is still alive. You know what I'm saying? Biggie is still alive somewhere. Those are common, you know? Elvis is still roaming around here somewhere. You get what I'm saying? That was so unexpected. And just kind of just thrown in there. For what? I feel like if that was the start of a chapter that's further into the story, maybe I would have gone into it with a better energy. But starting the story off with that already put me on a bad note. When they spelled out what it means to be enemies, do these two people even hate each other? At all. Any fiber of them because they seemed pretty obsessed with each other. They were very much first chapter watching each other from across the room. When I stopped reading at like 60 pages, 60 pages, that's it, 60 pages, they already were pretty much on the path to being friends again. <laughs> we gotta move on for that, cause like what? 14 ways to die. I decided to pick this up next. My friend picked this out for me. This is about a girl whose mother was a victim of a serial killer when she was like seven, and she gets this opportunity to go online and bring more attention to, you know, the case. When I tell you this book was excellent, this book had me in a grip. <laughs> which was amazing such a great moment to have after what happened with highly suspicious unfairly cute this was so good to me this chapters were like a page long it was glorious figuring out who did it <laughs> figuring out everything and just i don't know i enjoyed this check it out it has short like i swear to you the chapters are like a page long so you're gonna fly through this and you're gonna be like, wait a second, I finished it? I gave this four stars because I'm sure that, that there are things that probably maybe weren't exactly the best. I was kind of squinting at some of the relationships in here or some of the dynamics. I was like, uh, excuse me, why are you texting a teenager? That's weird. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. I gave this two stars. <laughs> hated every single character in this book even though we followed three characters they really only gave you two point of views and i didn't understand anything that was happening in this i don't understand why the two leads in this book were friends period because it seemed like they just were not they didn't get along they didn't treat each other well especially her to him like she treated him pretty poorly i don't really understand why and he 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 had no confidence like if you like if you like her say something you had plenty of opportunities like and like even the fact that he assumed that she wouldn't like him because of his race because of his disability like you know definitely part of because of the energy that she gives just saying um i don't really know also what the story was supposed to be telling me is it just that you constantly get second chances to reset and do the same exact thing but hopefully you do it better this time i don't know friendship is that what the deep message was supposed to be like romance is not a thing but then like at the end of the story romance ends up being the topic of conversation like we didn't get the romance the first time around but let's go for it this time let's reset the game and try again i don't know i don't know i don't know and i know none of that made sense but this didn't make sense to me like because like why was that relationship a thing i just don't even understand it and that character had no personality they're just a point blank like playboy like everyone likes them tell me something else about him i don't know like i feel like i don't know this was frustrating for all of the hoopla that i went through to get this book both physically and also the audiobook i do not feel like it was worth my time and so yeah i got two stars i hate that i i'm so happy for everyone who loved this story and felt like it was just everything to them they cried they loved it like this this is their book i think the book is cool looking you know but um did i enjoy this no would i recommend it no no you want to know a book i would recommend though <laughs> 
lessons in chemistry oh my goodness this was so good now this is also kind of like a sciencey nerdy i guess nerding out in a different way this is about a chemist in uh you know the 50s 60s she somehow gets a show about cooking and she incorporates science and things like that into the show while also relating to housewives across the nation i don't know but this was such a great fucking time this book had me in a hold okay <laughs> I, I i finished this so fast it was so lovely i loved everyone in this book except for the people i was meant to hate but like i loved everything it just it just had my heart it had me damn near in tears at one point i was just like no why would you do that why would you do that did we need that tragedy here and then the ending i wanted more i needed a bonus chapter like what do you mean that's the ending you know i need more give me a bonus chapter like hello is it that hard <laughs> uh but this is just such a good book i had to go out and buy it physically because um the audiobook just was so freaking good i want to reread this and annotate it fully i don't know when i feel like i have to wait a year before i can reread something like this but it was just so good damn i'm just saying it was so good <laughs> now finally let's get to the classics that i read this month so first up we have their eyes are watching god by zora neale hurston i have never read a zora neale hurston book before but this one was such a great start i really enjoyed the story i knew what it was about going in i gave the story five stars i really enjoyed it i really like the characters and like hearing about the relationship and just how um what's her name what the f <laughs> janie wait is it her name Amy's life and just kind of everything that happened this was kind of a wild ride uh seeing her relationships seeing just how she like kind of how it was on the come up and then trials and tribulations that happened um this was just a good read very quick read also i listened to the audiobook but i think that's a great way to get through classics the classic that i read for april was alice in wonderland <laughs> and shockingly i never actually remember reading this story as a child a lot shorter than i thought it was going to be i thought it was going to be like this big elaborate story but my feelings towards alice in wonderland has not changed with this book i was never really moved by it that much as a kid even when i watched the animated movie it wasn't my favorite and it's still not my favorite i listened to it i think it was cool but did i love it not really i gave it three stars because it was like a nice story and i think it definitely was a very different story for that time if it's geared towards children kind of but overall <laughs> i don't know i didn't really care that much about it i, I don't know we're just gonna leave it at that um those are all of the books that i read for the past two months i think it was a nice little bunch of books and hopefully may and june will treat me well for reading and we will find some more five star reads <laughs> which i feel like some of my anticipated reads of the year let me down but you know it happens we can't win them all and uh hopefully i can keep going keep keep up with my classics i really hope you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up comment all of that share it with your friends yeah that's all thank you so much for watching bye